Hey guys, welcome to Alex Alone. Today I wanted to tell you just the story I thought of this morning. Today we're going to talk about when you're traveling overseas, how to take care of yourself against some scams that are out there and how they can get you for money and how people can rob you uh, when you're an, unex uh, an unsuspecting tourist, all right, or even when you're on business and you're with people from the country that you're in, okay? This is a story about Istanbul, Turkey, and what I'm gonna call the restaurant scams. And these are quite popular. You know, a lot of you have probably heard about the Nigerian scams. You know about how people contact you by email or call you and tell you they're in Nigeria and their country was kidnapped. I mean, their family and They've got money tied up in a bank, but they just need to establish a U.S. bank account. And if you deposit a small amount, then they will put a few million dollars in there. And then you get a big percentage of it. You know, and then what they do is they they end up just whatever you deposit in that account and put their name on it. They just take it. I first got my first Nigerian uh, email scam. That was in 1992, 1993. But uh, here's another scam that's just as well known, but if you're going to Turkey, I used to travel a lot when I worked in the poultry hatchery business. Uh, I used to go visit my distributor was in <laughs> my distributor. My distributor was in near Izmir in a town called Akisar. And it's also near another town. It's like a twin city. It's called Manisa, M-A-N-I-S-A. We were in Akisar, Manisa, near Izmir in Turkey. And we actually used to travel out and we would go visit chicken farms. And uh, I was the international sales director of a company in Illinois that sold hatchery equipment and automation. And at the time, I actually worked for one of the, the three owners of the company whose office was just down the hall from me is, was Howard Buffett, Warren Buffett's son. And uh, Howard and I used to have lunch and uh, I knew the Buffetts. And that uh, was working for a Buffett company. He's, he's since left that company. He actually bought the competitor's company. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've had many lunches with uh, Howard. Anytime I would have clients come in, we would arrange to have a lunch with Howard. And so anyway, so this group that I was in, a lot of, I mean, we dealt with King Faisal of Saudi Arabia. He bought a lot of equipment for the chicken production in there country. We had grain systems. We had uh, a lot of different large agricultural supplies, okay? And Howard lived in the same town I did. But uh, so I got introduced to these people in Turkey. So I had a distributor there and he was in Akazar Manisa near Izmir. So one day I go to a, one week I went to a convention. I went to a, a an agricultural fair that was in Istanbul. And I had heard, I had another friend that worked for, uh, he was British, a friend of mine, Robert. He ran the operations in England. And he told us how, he went to a restaurant and they sat in Istanbul. And when they sat down in this restaurant, he was with another coworker and they, they chose a place to go for dinner and they went to this restaurant in Istanbul. And when they sat down, they looked at the prices and chose their meal. And then they ate their meal. And then when they go to leave, they given them this bill. It's like $450. And they were thinking they ordered maybe at the most like $80 worth of food, luxury food, you know. And they said, oh, no, no. that's." And they showed them. They said, that's not the price that was on the menu. And they said, yes, it is. And they went and they got a menu that was a different menu and they changed the prices. And then they, they bring it to your table and they say, these are the products that you ordered and these are the prices that were on there. And they argued with them and said, no, they're not. That's not the prices. Those are not the prices that were on that menu. And then the waiter gets tough and they say, look, you're not going to leave here until you pay us that amount. So you... You at that point you have a choice. You you're gonna fight your way out, which 
Remind me to tell you another story about a piano bar in Argentina on Florida Street in Buenos Aires, <laughs> where I did actually fight my way out. So I knew about these scams in Istanbul, but I never imagined it would happen to me. So I, after the conference one day, I was in the booth, and we had a salesman that was with us. I don't, he was Turkish, but uh, I didn't know him very well. He wasn't my distributor, but he worked for another branch of our company under the Buffett umbrella I was in at the time. So we go to this restaurant. It's a nice restaurant. We eat the food. And it's in a very commercial district where there was a lot of shopping and tourists and restaurants and fine things everywhere and things to do and music. And it got to be about 1030 at night and we finished our meal and we ordered another appetizer platter to sit there and we were discussing business. And suddenly the guy I'm with, he gets up and he says, I've got to go home. I've got to see my wife, my kids. And uh, he had disappeared for a couple of minutes and went over to the front counter and he paid the bill. And he said, I've already paid the bill. If you're not going now, you can just leave whenever I've already paid. Don't worry about it. Now, to this day, I'm not sure if he lied. <laughs> I didn't know this guy that well. He was just in the booth with me that day. I just met him on this trip. So here's the weird part. This is where it gets freaky. My stories always get freaky. <laughs> on my last story, I told you where I met the soldiers from Jade Helm. This is where it gets freaky. So I'm sitting there. He leaves. The lights go down. The stage lights up. These poles come out and these women come out and it turns into this burlesque strip club dance thing, you know, where these women are dancing on poles. And I've just got, uh, I was hungry, so I've got a few more things to eat on my appetizer platter, and I'm leaving. So I watched a little bit. I wasn't that into it. I was so busy on that business trip. So I maybe stayed for another 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and I finished everything. I didn't want to waste my food. And I got up to walk out, and the waiter came over and said, where are you going? And I said, oh, I'm leaving. I said, uh, he goes, you haven't paid your bill. I said, my friend paid the bill before he left. And we ordered all of that and he paid. And he said, no, he didn't pay anything. And they gave me a bill that was twice as much as what we had ordered. And they said, you have to, then this bouncer came over, this big, uh, he looked like Jean-Claude Van Damme, but he was about three times bigger. <laughs> Just a huge, like a heavyweight, WWE uh, fighter, but 235 pounds, you know. And he said, uh, you can't leave until you pay that bill. I said, I don't have the money. I didn't have money with me. I didn't have any cash. I didn't have my local cash. I, I didn't even have my uh, debit card on me. I had brought some cash. I think I had 50 or or $100 when we first went out. We went shopping and bought some things and paid for dinner or whatever. Or I had like $50. I said, I don't have enough money. I said, I've got more money at the hotel, but I, I cannot pay you here. And he said, that's fine. We'll take you to your hotel. So the bouncer of this strip club now, it was not a strip club when we walked in. So the, the bouncer of this strip club takes me in the owner's Mercedes Benz in, this is in Istanbul, okay? Not that many people are driving Mercedes-Benz around Istanbul, unless there's somebody important or involved with the mafia or something, all right? Takes me at about 11 o'clock at night to my hotel to go get money out of my safe so that I can pay him my restaurant bill and he'll go back to the club and leave me alone. But they're robbing me. It's just complete robbery because my business associate paid the bill I was only eating the after meal appetizer plate that he ordered, that he ordered actually. You know, I still to this day, I can't believe that my business companion set me up and didn't pay the bill and did all of that on purpose. He didn't seem at all like the type of guy and he was a good guy. And not only that, but the bill that they gave me was like 200 and something dollars. I said, we did not order that much food. And he, yeah, you did. And they just insisted and they said, you can't leave until you pay the bill. And anyway, so I get driven to my, I was in this five-star hotel, downtown Istanbul. 
And so I get driven to the hotel by this bouncer and I go in to the hotel and I go up to my room. And I'm thinking, I've been in these situations before. I traveled a lot. I've got like five or six million miles around the world on airline miles. And I've been to over 60 countries on business and conventions like this. And I've seen a lot of stuff. This is where I'm going to start telling these stories. And uh, I got to my room and I'm pacing around the room and I'm thinking, what do I do? What do I do? Do I try to beat him? Can I get away? I thought, you know, maybe I could go ditch him and run up and hide on the roof somewhere and just sleep on the roof tonight. Or I can try to escape out the back door. I said, but I said, if he's doing this, he's probably involved in the local mafia and I don't want to mess with him. And he's probably going to have control over the desk clerk who's going to give him whatever he wants. Uh, even a key to probably get into my room. So I should not mess around with him. So I went and I, I pulled some American Express traveler's checks I had out of my safe and I went down to the lobby and I exchanged them with the desk clerk at the concierge desk. And then I went over to this mafia bouncer and I paid him his money and he had a big smile on his face and he was very friendly. And he said, thank you, my friend. Everything is fine now. And he left and he drove off in his Mercedes. So that's what can happen to you when you're traveling in Turkey. Be careful out there of the restaurant scam. Don't let them get you. All right. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Ciao.